With the Queen's funeral still set to take place, I'm sure you are all more than aware in the UK, even though we are facing a time of extreme number of like crisis after crisis after crisis at the moment, we are in a period of mourning. And I very, very much agree with, with what we've got on the screen here. You know, we are in a period of mourning, but when reality hits, oh boy, is it going to hit hard. You know, you only have to look back at Wednesday at that PMQ just before we heard the announcement that it was tense. You had constant backing and throwing between sort of the, the opposition parties and the conservatives that has now very set a very clear line in what it wants. That it is going to be sort of Thatcherism 2.0 and we are expecting Kersey uh, Kutang to at least in sort of the coming days, maybe to announce an emergency budget, uh, maybe next week, before the MPs rise again to go on conference. So we are going to see the, <laughs> the exact same things happen. We've already got bankers having their bonuses unleashed, and now the idea that all we have to do is we'll just deregulate the city and the wealth will just ripple out across the rest of the country. But we've been here before, and it didn't work before, <laughs> you know? It only really helped a very small amount of people. And this time, there's not even the same climate as there was in the 80s. We are going into what we can see to be a, a very, <laughs> very, very obvious recession. Um, we've had the World Bank today warning that uh, interest rates could cause a worldwide recession, but here in the UK, we are already looking at a potential recession with Liz Trusses and the current bizarre, mad fantasy economic plan that they've got potentially already set to cause who knows how much economic damage just in the UK alone. And trust me, they are just getting started. So as always, we've said, it's always best to have a look at... Um, you know, a view from abroad. What are foreign journalists saying about what's going on in the UK? Because very often it is good to get a sort of foreign view of what they're saying about the UK and what insight they are gleaming, not only from their view, from some of their home and sort of what they see being sort of the British public mood. And uh, here you have a, uh, a selection of uh, of different pieces from, from different journalists. However, we're going to go over the guy the guy from Austria because I think he really I think had the best one <laughs> he, I think he really did have the best piece uh that I think sums up this mood perfectly and it is we are mourning currently a fate we have chosen ourselves um and we'll get into that in, in a moment but as, as always before we do that uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to our, our, our Patreon page and our off-station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. There is also the one off-station button down below called the YouTube Thank You button you can use as well. And of course, there is the YouTube subscription uh, thing that we've got going as well, where you get badges, emojis, and whatnot as well on that. So as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel that way, even if you do just hit the like and share button. So let's glow over to this. And we'll go down because it's at the very bottom. There we are. So, his title of this uh, piece that he wrote for uh, for all these different sort of views from abroad: the British are mourning a fate they have chosen for themselves. Since the abolition, uh, the abolition, <laughs> the abolition of the monarchy after the First World War, Austrians have generally are quite happy Republicans at least since the end of the Third Reich. But all Austrian TV channels have been broadcasting other scenes in Britain live. In Vienna, the former capital of the Habsburg Empire, the flags will fly at half-mast during the Queen's funeral on next Monday. Even Vienna's coffee shops, the once havens for rebellious intellectuals, seem to be filled with people talking about how much they miss the Queen. It is not so much monarchist nostalgia, and a long-standing for Austria's own legendary Empress uh, Zizi, and that's how you say it, uh, that drives this astonishing interest, but rather in times of Zenonwald, while not noticing, uh, noticing seems to be the same as the nuclear war inflicted by Putin, and possibly a pause to remember that better times is a welcome distraction. 
The deeper outpouring of grief in the UK is understandable, but it also seems to unlock something else. Grief, stress, and sorrow over the fate of the disunited kingdom it has chosen for itself. The Queen's funeral will mark a moment when Britain also bids farewell to the country as it was once known. The British Empire used to be the anchor of the UK family uh, firmly in the world. Later, as part of the EU, it had the international influence and remains one of the biggest economies of the world. But questions hang over all of that. The empire is increasingly seen as a colonial crime, and stains of, uh, of Brexit might tear the union itself apart. Scotland seeks independence, and Northern Ireland is moving closer to the Republic in the South. Having uh, taken itself out of the daily business of the EU, Britain's place in Europe is weaker. And on the world stage, it has to fight for attention as a mid-ranking trading nation going it alone. A country claiming to be global Britain has meanwhile, since Brexit, become narrow-minded, anti-immigrant, intellectually, uh, an internally, sorry, an internally divided society, driven now by a sect, a uh, sect-like group of conservative Brexiteers. It has ended up with a minister of energy who is a climate skeptic. And tells it tells you a lot about the state of the UK that Jacob Rees-Mogg is more reactionary in his environmental policies than the new King Charles III. And of course, uh, this is the UK correspondent for, I think, two different uh, Austrian newspapers, the Falter and the Prost. <laughs> Again, not Austrian. <laughs> so I'm not sure how you pronounce those. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's caught more closely um, the mood here in the UK than, than anywhere else. Um, it sums it up perfectly. We have a lot of questions to answer once this, this morning period is over. How do we solve our, our current economic uh, you know, situation and crisis? Liz Truss's ideas have been tried uh, before and they failed before, so we know exactly what is about to happen. We know that the dangers, her other economic plans that she wants to do, the fact that you've got not only just Jacob Rees-Mogg, a climate skeptic in charge of energy, but also business secretary as well in charge of a swathe, a swathe of workers' rights and other um, regulatory leaders, levers, that he will quite happily just get rid of. And sect is completely right. They, I, we've said this before. These Brexiteers that are in there are free market fundamentalists, and they are going full tilt to practice their religion. I've said this before to a lot of people. A lot of people saying, oh, will there be a, a general election? No, <laughs> absolutely not. They have so much power now. They've positioned themselves perfectly. We've said this before, but 88% of our government is now controlled by the ERG. They are fully in control. So when mistakes start to happen, they can't blame anyone else now. But then again, they haven't been able to blame anyone else really since they put Boris Johnson in charge back in 2019 and then won an overwhelming majority um, following his, uh, you know, his, his put into, into, into power. They've had no one really to blame since 2016. It's their, their idea, their project, they made all these outlandish promises that aren't coming to pass, but I'd want to do so many things that, if we, in reality, no one in the UK wanted to do. Remember, Brexit, at one point, uh, many Brexiteers made the case that Brexit was all about getting rid of globalization. But many of the Brexiteers have talked nonstop about um bringing in globalization to all the UK. And we've, we've seen this by wanting to sort of get rid of tariffs and, and deregulate the market. And we've seen this with now the bankers' bonuses, which is sets a very, very worrying precedent. Very worrying precedent. Because the whole idea was to sort of those, you know, the, the restraint on them was to sort of rein in the bankers from doing all these very risky deals, which in part were very much responsible for the 2008 financial crash. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll finish it as we started. Um, reality is about to hit us very hard. Very hard indeed. And we we have to sort of wake up to, to sort of what is going on here. And we start have to be putting forward solutions. And this is where I've said 
um, one of the, the pieces in here says that, oh, Labour sort of lacks vision. And I, I, I do sort of agree, but I think Labour's vision is, is now going to become, I think, even more clearer. And I think Keir Starmer and the rest of his sort of team really have to start sharpening that vision of what it has been, because for really the past couple of years, it's been very, very blurry. And you've got an upcoming Labour conference. And that is the time where he really, really has to set out what the vision for a, a Labour-run Britain is. And now that you've got this extreme Tory government in charge, you can set some very, very good parallels of that is the Tories, this is us. So, as always, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching, and of course, we'll see you all next time.